Hello! In the previous videos we have learned how to predict things using one input and one output, then multiple inputs and one output. Uh, that's if you remember when we took a weighted sum of multiple inputs to predict one thing, uh, the probability that we will watch a movie. And finally we uh, tried to predict uh, th three different outputs, uh, the flower species based on one input, uh, the petal width. And as you can probably guess, the next logical step is to predict multiple outputs using multiple inputs. We will continue working on the flower species prediction, uh, like in the previous video, except this time we will combine uh, everything that we have learned so far, and we will put together uh, multiple inputs to predict uh, multiple outputs. That will allow us to take into account multiple measurements and uh, make better predictions. So, our neural network will look like this. It will have multiple inputs, multiple outputs, and it will allow to take into account not just petal width, but petal length and uh, sepal length. And of course there can be as many of those as you want, but we will stick to three for now, to keep it simple. Just as before, the weights connect each input with each output, and we need to calculate the weighted sum of inputs. Except that uh, this time we will need to perform three independent weighted sums to make three separate, separate predictions. So in the previous video we have performed three different multiplications for each output, this time we will perform three different weighted sums. So uh, this uh, output, the first one, will take weighted sum of all the inputs, then the second output will take weighted sum of all the inputs but with different weights, and same one, uh, same thing for the third one. Uh, there are two ways of thinking about this. First of all, you can imagine uh, three weights coming out of each input, but just logically and intuitively it makes a lot less sense than thinking about uh, three outputs accepting three different inputs. Uh, it makes sense because uh, uh, these outputs are more or less independent predictions. So if we close, if we ignore the the two bottom outputs and just think about the first one, it will be just the usual prediction that takes weighted sum of the inputs and uh, uh, adds them up to make a prediction. So think of it as three completely uh, independent dot products, three independent weighted sums of the inputs. Okay, great. So uh, it will be very similar to what we have done before, but before we move on, we will need to learn one more concept uh, to figure out how we are going to represent our data and weights uh, uh, this time. So uh, just as before, uh, inputs will be in, in a list or in other words, a vector of values. And uh, as you can probably remember, uh, we have three inputs. These are just three numbers uh, contained in a Python list. But this time, as you can see, we have a lot more weights. Uh, and uh, each of the outputs have three weights coming into it. And uh, to neatly and conveniently represent them this time, uh, we will going to use something called a matrix. You'll understand why uh, just by looking at this illustration. So uh, a matrix is basically just a list, a list of vectors. So here we have one output, uh, this one, and we have three weights coming into it, first, second, and third, uh, from each of the three inputs. So if this first row of the matrix is representing the three inputs coming into this output and contributing to this prediction. Same goes for the second output, we have three weights contributing to this prediction, and the third output, uh, three weights from each of the inputs contributing to its prediction. Okay, so uh, all we need to do to make it uh, convenient and representable by one variable is to take the three of these uh, lists and stack them together. And stacking them together is called the matrix. Uh, think of it as a table or as a list of lists or as a list of vectors. Okay, great. I hope I hope that this is clear enough. Now, uh, how are we going to calculate our predictions? Uh, well, as before, there is a convenient math operation that takes care of all of this for us. So what we need to do is to make three independent weighted sums and predict three outputs. Uh, uh, there is something called the matrix vector multiplication that does exactly this. I will walk you through this, don't be afraid of all these numbers, it will make sense in a second. So all we need to do to calculate our results, our predictions, which as you can see, this might be familiar to you, this is just a dot product of two vectors, and all we need to do is to take three different dot products between rows of the matrix and our input vector. So we will take the dot product between the first row of the matrix and our input vector, and uh, uh, that will be our first prediction, our first output for the first uh, type of uh, flower. Uh, then we will take the second row of uh, weights, we'll also multiply it by the same vector, and the dot product of that will be the second prediction, and the same one with the third. We take third row of vectors, because uh, each of, for, for each input and output vectors are separate and independent from each other, we multiply it by the same uh, input vector, and as a result we have the third dot product. Like so. I will take you through all of this in code to make it more simple and easy to understand. 
Not one uh, little peculiar peculiar thing in this uh, situation is that I have put matrix first and uh, input vector second. Uh, they, are, they are flipped around a little bit. Otherwise, you would want to put input vector first and then matrix to make it look like uh, our neural network because we first have inputs but then weights. In this case, however, for the math to work out, it's very important that uh, the fir we first take the matrix and uh, then multiply it by vector. If these two terms would be flipped around, uh, we would uh, have uh, very different results because of how ma vector ma matrix multiplication works. So again, this might look like a lot of numbers, but in practice, we'll just need to loop over each output and do a weighted sum just as we have done before. And uh, mm, then we will find a way to make everything is even easier with NumPy. So let's just jump over to code and see how it works in practice. All right, so here we are in our Jupyter notebook and let's get started practicing and figuring out how to represent everything in code. Just as mentioned earlier, we are choosing to think about this neural network as a series of weighted sums. So what I will do first is to take a weighted sum code that we have made from the previous video, uh, from the one about multiple inputs and one output. So this is what we wrote. Uh, we looped through each of the elements of the vector and uh, uh, multiplied uh, them with corresponding elements of the other vector and uh, add them all up to calculate a weighted sum and put them into the output variable. So this was our first function for the first uh, network with multiple inputs and one output. Now we are going to learn how to uh, use it to make multiple predictions. It's going to be very simple. So we will create a function called matri matrix uh, vector multiplication matvecmol. It will accept a matrix of our weights and the vector of our inputs. We are going to have output. This, kind of, this time it's going to be a list because it's going to contain three of the predictions that we want to make. And then, as I have explained in the slides, all we need to do is to go through each of the rows in the matrix for row in mat. And we will do the weighted sum with the input vector and append it to the output. So we will type weighted sum between our matrix row, the row weights, and the vector of inputs. And then we are going to append this to the output. Output, append. So it will just push a number into this list that is that corresponds to this weighted sum. Now we will simply return our output. That's it. So all we did we is to perform weighted sum uh, three times for each of the rows in the matrix. So let's uh, see how it works. Uh, on an example, let's say we have a simple input vector and we will have a simple uh, uh, weight matrix. I will just copy paste it like so. So uh, let's say we want to uh, calculate uh, the three predictions based on uh, these uh, inputs and weights. We will simply take uh, this function, pass them, pass it the matrix in the vector, matrix in the vector, and ta-da, it has outputted our prediction. So uh, just to clarify for, uh, for the last time how it worked, it, it took uh, this row, basically it looked through each of the rows of the matrix, this one, this one, and this one. It took this row and uh, calculated a dot product, or in other words, words a weighted sum with this vector. And then it, it uh, uh, multiplied each of the elements by, by the corresponding element, added them together, and the um, uh, output, uh, the result is uh, 14. So it put the result into this first number over here, in the first number in the output. Then it took the second row, also done the uh, weighted sum with the vector, and put the output, uh, the, uh, the result over here. Finally, third row, one more weighted sum, one more final prediction. Excellent. I hope this makes sense. Uh, now we are going to learn to do the same thing with NumPy. So all these function, functions that we are writing is just for you to have an intuition and understanding of what, what's going on under the hood. But now we will learn a simple function from NumPy that is going to do all of this for us automatically. As always, we will import NumPy as np and we are going to use np dot just as before. You may might not have known this, but the NumPy.product can accept matrix uh, or two vectors. So before we used to just do this with two vectors, uh, with the input vector and the weight vector, now we have the weight matrix and the input vector. And if we look at the result, look at that. The previous result that we have calculated manually and the result that uh, NumPy has created for us automatically and uh, probably much more quickly because it's got more, more optimized. Uh, as you can see, they are identical, and this is what we are going to use for now to accomplish 
uh, the matrix vector multiplication and predicting multiple outputs based on multiple inputs is going to come into uh, play a lot uh, in the future videos so may, please make sure that you understand this that this function does uh, what these functions do one more very important thing to understand just as i've told you in slides uh, that if you are going to switch uh, switch around the order of those two uh, two elements like np dot yeah mat. so if you're going to put a vector first and my matrix second accidentally look at what happens we have completely different results because of the way math works with matrix vector multiplications you cannot just switch around uh, just like you would do with two numbers so this is very important to keep in mind to avoid mistakes in the future uh, the order of operations matters sweet uh, now that we have done all the theoretical stuff everything else will be pretty much just like we have done it in the previous videos in fact i'm just going to for the most part copy the code from the previous videos uh, to not waste your time because it's very simple and identical to what we have done before so we have an n function it, it accepts inputs and weights as always it calculates our predictions uh, it uses the dot product to calculate them except instead of uh, weight uh, weight vector it's going to accept the matrix of weights it will uh, do the dot product with uh, the inputs and it will return our prediction the next step is to define the data and uh, in this case we are going to uh, define the measurements of a flower if you remember we have uh, multiple measurements of a flower their sepal length and width their petal length and width and we are going to use them to predict the uh, species of a flower so i will again copy paste the numbers so you don't have to watch me type them so we have sample length, sample width, and pedal width. Uh, it's going to be taken from the data set that I have shared with you. You can also find it in the description of this video. And uh, this is just three measurements of one flower. And we will create our inputs array, which will just take three of these numbers and put it into a list, like so, very simple. So inputs will look like this. Just 6.7, 3.3, and 2.1. The next step, I'm going to define our way. Uh, let's come this inputs the, the next step is to define our weights once again weights will be completely made up i will just copy and paste the weights that i have done by uh, just basically randomly i've just made all, up all of those numbers in the future they will be trained for now they're just something that they come up with for no reason at all so don't worry about it and finally we are going to use our neural network to make a prediction We use the onend function, we will pass it the information we need, and we will print out the prediction. Excellent. So what does this mean? Well, theoretically, what I'm trying to explain to you and represent here is that this neural network took the information about uh, flowers measurements, three inputs, the shape of its uh, sepals and petals, their uh, the sepal length, the sepal width, and petal width. And then it passed it through the uh, matrix of weights, and has done the three different predictions for what? What do these predictions represent? Well, they represent the probability of a uh, flower belonging to a certain species. So we had Iris uh, citosa, Iris versicolor, or Iris virginica. So the probability of uh, it belonging to the first species is uh, uh, 1.4, the probability of the second is uh, 9.4, and the probability of the third one is uh, 96. Uh, this is very similar to how neural networks work in the real world and you're going to make the actual realistic neural network that are going to make predictions based on real world data set they will be uh, doing something similar they will for example accept pixels from an image of a cat or a dog and then they will output to you two probabilities probability that it is a cat or a probability that it is a dog or a probability that it is a horse uh, this is how you interpret the result of the uh, classification neural network there are different kinds but this is how it works for this one so there you go now we have learned how to make uh, predictions using multiple inputs and multiple outputs we are very close to completing the first part of the course and uh, in the next video we are we will learn to stack layers together we will have a multi-layer deep neural network that is going to accept multiple inputs uh, we will output multiple outputs and we'll have a deep layer that is going to help us to make more smart predictions and that's where all the magic of deep learning is going to come in I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial, I hope this series is useful to you, and I'll see you in my future videos.